IPO chart, snakes and ladders. Now, in a recent video, we looked at a context and data flow diagram of snakes and ladders and really the processes involved and the flow of data between those processes. Today, we're going to look at an actual input process output chart outlining those three specific areas. So firstly, we'll quickly go over what snakes and ladders is again. Obviously, it's a traditional board game where players roll a dice to traverse a pathway using a specific token. Along the pathway, there are a number of locations that connect with either snakes and or ladders. When a player lands their token on a snake, it descends the token backwards to an earlier point along the pathway, whereas when they land on a ladder, their token ascends ahead up the ladder much further along the pathway. Now, this is advantageous because the whole point of the game is to get your token to be the first one to get to the end of the path, essentially get to the goal first before other all other players' tokens. So let's take a look at this within the context of input, process and output within this system of the game. Now this could apply to the traditional board game version or we could think of it if we're making our own digital version, a computerized version as a simple program. So the first one as highlighted here is the rolling of the dice. Okay, when you roll the dice, okay, essentially the process is a randomization. You're gonna get a number between one and six and then that is gonna be the dice roll value. Okay, and the dice roll value is important because that dice roll value says how many spaces your piece is going to move. So that output then leads to the next process, okay, because the token will be moved based on whatever that dice roll value is. So if you roll a three with the dice, your token is going to move three spaces forward. Now, if we're using two dice, the randomization would be between one and 12. Okay, but in this case, we're going to stick to one to six. Okay, the dice roll value then goes to the next process of moving the token. The token will move ahead of spaces and the output is the movement of those to, of the actual token. Now, now that the token has actually moved to a spot, we now are going to actually land on a spot with rules. So essentially, the next step is the landing position rules. Okay, this is the next process. And as the game already suggests, it's snakes and ladders. So the first spot we'll look at is that of snake. You land on a snake, you're essentially the process is to move the player's token, okay, back down the snake and obviously to a prior position in the game. Okay, so the output is the token descends the snake. Okay, and then the other side of that is landing on a ladder. Okay, when they land on a ladder, they are to move up and the output is the token ascends the ladder further ahead in the game. Okay, so there are the two main landing positions that the game outlines. But there is a third and very important position, okay, that players will be landing on regularly. And it's the actual neutral position. Okay, if they land on neutral, which is the spots that do nothing. Okay, this is the stay in position, um, actual position when the player lands on it. But the other key thing to understand is when a player lands on a snake or ladder, those two pathways take them to a neutral position. So essentially the neutral position is important because it means that their turn is over and it's now the next player's turn. So that means their turn is finished and the output is next player's turn. Okay, and then the final important position is when they land on the goal. Okay, once a player gets their token at the end, they land on the goal, they are declared winner, the game is complete, and then there'll be a message, okay, that you're the winner. Okay, it could be the other player saying it, or in a computerized one, a message may pop up on the screen saying, you are the winner, you reach the goal first. Okay, so I hope this IPO chart has given you a good outline of the inputs, process, and outputs that are involved in the Snakes and Ladders game. Essentially, not just that you land on a snake, you go down and descend, you land on a ladder, you go up, but the randomization of the dice being a process and how that directly re links into the next step of the movement of the token. Okay, how that when you essentially a player lands on a neutral spot, that is the signal in the game, the process in the game that is now the next player's turn, and how landing on the goal declares a winner.